Welcome back, everyone. One of the big criticisms of a lot of Beretta platforms to include the PX4 is the slide mounted safety, to which generally I agree. So I prefer if you can have a decocker only version. So that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to show you how to do it, and then we're going to come back out here, test it out, and see how it works. The first step is going to be disassembling the pistol. So we'll just make sure it's clear. It is at this point, pull down the tab. So pull them back, put the slide, go forward. Take it off. We don't need our barrel spring or block here for this one. So we'll set those all aside If I can It's always easier when you're not on video I assure you <laughs> And get on with it now. We're gonna pop out the extractor by taking out this roll pin this here's a 330 seconds pin and uh, We'll just knock it out And there should be a couple springs in there, hang tight. We'll remove that. Here's the extractor. There you can see the spring. Get those out. Remember where those went. And you can see there's actually a double spring there, like I was saying. So two springs. One goes inside the other. The next step is to knock out this roll pin right here on the safety holding it in. Now the problem with this is if I let go, it becomes misaligned and you can't get your punch in there. So you really kind of have to hold it almost down to get the tension off and then drive it out. So it's a little complicated, especially when you're trying to get it on a camera angle. It was a little tough to get it to budge from the top, so we uh, came at it from the bottom. Works much better that way, as you can see there. And here's our roll pin. We'll set that aside, keep it separate from your uh, extractor pin. They look relatively similar and should just pull that out and watch for the spring that we were just fighting against there. It should come right out. There you go. To remove this side of the safety lever, we'll just first take the spring off so we don't lose it. Now it's kind of a two part process. We're going to push both on the uh, firing pin safety here and then on this little ball that you see exposed on the back of the hammer. So. First, we're going to want to depress the firing pin safety and then depress that piece in the back and push forward. You hear that click. That's what you want. I'm going to rotate up so this little knob here is exposed. Now we just got to remove that and just grab onto it with a pair of pliers. Come straight out. It's just a bar that goes across, as you can see there. So at this point, we should be able to remove it. Voila. This little uh, detent right here is the actual uh, thing that we got to remove to uh, make sure that the safety doesn't engage and it just springs back up like the Type G should. To get that little ball out, we're just gonna push from the hole here on the back and just pop it. Should work, not without much issues, we'll see. There you go. And that right there is exactly what you're looking for. Pull that sucker out. We'll remove the spring now because we don't need that as well. Set that off to the side in case you ever want to put it back. I doubt you will, but if you do, um, now we're going to put it back in. And you need to depress your firing pin in there to be able to get this across, at least in my experience you do. So an easy way to do that is just, as you can see when we line it up here, you can see that hole. We're just going to put our little punch through that hole to depress it as we're pushing over. Maybe if I can do it on camera. Push forward, and you're pushing down and over, and that'll slide it in. Now, at this point, we will put our little pin back in that we pulled out into that gap. Make sure it sits down there flush. To get the safety all the way in, we have to push down on the firing pin safety to relieve the tension there, and just kind of work it across. There you go. This next part can be kind of confusing for some folks. Uh, this little hole that you see right here in your safety, what you're gonna do with that is you're gonna take on your spring here, this piece that's sticking up vertically, I don't know if you can really see that here, this little piece that's sticking up, we're gonna put that in there. So you can see here, hopefully the camera's focused and uh, that's gonna line right in there. It should drop in there and fit flush with this little piece of spring overhanging. That, this right here, is gonna go in the groove right here on the top as we uh, put it in. So, hopefully we can get some of this on camera. And you wanna make sure your spring is in there. So it is. At this point, we're gonna work it down. Oops. 
and that's it. At this point, we just need to put our roll pin back in to get it to stay in place. Now that the roll pin's all the way in, you can see how it looks there, both on the top and the bottom. It should look exactly like it looked um, when you took it out, and it should work like a G model from both sides. You just want to check that and make sure that both sides are functioning as they should. We'll put our extractor back in, and you want to make sure the little spring's within the big spring. Set that in the little hole, as you can see down in the uh, extractor uh, cut out and that little spring fell out, little bastard. So we'll make sure it stays in there this time. And uh, I'll line that up. You're gonna kinda have to put a little bit of tension on it with your finger while we get the uh, roll pin started. You can go either from the bottom or from the top. It really doesn't matter when you're putting this back in. And uh, just get that down flush. Now the extractor's back in there, you just want to make sure that you can actually put some tension on it and the springs are working as they should. You should feel some tension as you actually work that in and out. Now we'll reassemble our gun and go test fire it. We finished up with the uh, modification there, removing those detent spring. You can see here it's functioning as it should, as we just showed you guys inside. So I suppose it's time for the live fire test and see how it actually does. And as you saw there, it dropped on a live round, no issues, and it's springing right back up. If we wanted to re-engage, we'll just start out at the double action position. And decock again. So that's sort of one of the advantages, one of the big advantages, in my opinion, of this type of system. In my opinion, the PX4 is 100% safe to carry in this uh, condition here. So this is how I prefer to have them set up. So hopefully you guys learned today how to do it, how simple it was a punch and a couple other rudimentary tools and you can set it up so that way your gun is like that and you won't have the chance of accidentally engaging that safety if you're manipulating the firearm. If you guys have any questions about this or anything else we talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.